Hi, I'm Bill Woodard, and this is the November edition of the Chamber Corner. Well, we're approaching the holidays again, and it's uh, November, and uh, December is just right upon us. And so uh, we've asked Miss Pam Billington if she would uh, uh, come by, as she's with the Smith County Heritage Museum, and we've asked her to come by and tell us what's going on with the museum. So, Pam, uh, what, what's happening? Well, we're getting ready for the, for the uh, holidays, and we have just gotten in all kinds of items to sell there in our uh, store. Our first item that we have is our Christmas ornament. And we have our Christmas ornament. You Here, I'll be Vanna. All right, you be Vanna. Uh, we did the courthouse rendition that's done by Miss Helen Birdwell. And this was a print that she, taken from a print that she had made. And we even on the back have her signature, the, her style of signature on the back. So we hope that everybody will want to add that to their collection. We got, we have several, and we are getting several people calling and wanting us to reserve their ornaments. So come by or call us, and we'll re, we'll hold it for you till you get a chance. Another item that we have now, and Bill, if you want to hold this and let the camera get on it closer, we have the mug that was, they sold these originally, probably right after the museum opened. And we have the mugs again for sale. These are a larger, I think they're a larger size mug than they were uh, the original, but it has the courthouse on it. And it says Smith County Heritage Museum on the side. And we're selling those this year in the store. Now, our item that's really doing well already are our caps there. And Bill, if you'll get a cap up there, we have the caps that have the logo, kind of almost the same logo as the county has adopted. But we have these caps in several colors. We have charcoal gray. We have orange, of course. We have, that's the charcoal gray right there. We have uh, brown. We also have uh, like a green, uh, hunter green. It's there. We have all sorts of different colors and can get different ones if you have one that you want to have in particular. We're also selling toboggans. And these toboggans have the logo. It's a leather logo and it has the county with the tri-star on it and it says, Smith County, Tennessee on it. And those are selling for 18. Now the caps are selling for 25, but they seem to be being uh, well received. People are coming in and, and making their purchases on these caps. Now we also have been donated pictures here. And if Bill will just kind of rotate through these Let's see. I, from the back. I'll go from the back. <laughs> you and I figured from that out a while ago. These pictures are done by uh, Leslie Van Hook. And he uh, had done several using farm scenes and mules. Usually his have mules in the uh, picture. So we have these on sale at the museum as well. And I think there's like five different scenes, five different pictures. So if you're interested in, in getting one of those, maybe for a friend or maybe just something you'd like to have yourself, come by the museum. And they are uh, limited edition prints so uh, it's not so. like uh, yeah. you can find these anywhere oh, else. Oh no, yeah. These are strictly sold at the museum now. And just come by and look at them. We'll have those in the uh, store there at the museum. All right, Bill, that's what we're doing at the museum. <laughs> okay, well now, uh, uh, we're having Hometown Christmas right. November the 29th. Yes. 
So uh, are the museum, uh, are you planning on putting a booth up so people can see yeah, this stuff? Yeah, we're going to be here on the court, courthouse grounds, courthouse grounds uh -huh, with a table, and we'll have all of these items for sale on that day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then, of course, we're open three days a week, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and our hours are from 10 to 2. Okay, uh, what about a phone number if they want to contact you? Yeah. Yes, we are, are there and we can uh, be reached by dialing 615-735-1104 or our email address if you want to send, uh, send us an email. It's at Heritage Museum and that is dtccom.net. Okay, and uh, if you forget those numbers, you can always call us at the Chamber of Commerce, 615-735-2093, uh, or just go onto the website. Right. And you also have a Facebook page and a web page yes, as well. Yes, we do. Now, County we Heritage. may have, we are going to put some of these down at the Chamber. Right. and have those for sale at the chamber. So if you're not able to come by the museum, you'll be able to uh, pick those up maybe during the day at the chamber when okay. we're not open. All right. Well, Pam, thank you for coming oh, by. Thank I you, am so everybody. glad everything's going well at the yes, museum. Yes, it is. Yes. And uh, people need to just come by and just look oh, around. Yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, you would be amazed at the history of Smith County and some of the things that have went on. That's right. Uh, we're in the historic uh, courthouse right mm -hmm. now, mm -hmm. and uh, there's actually a lot of stuff to see here, but uh, the museum right. has actual stories and, mm -hmm. and dioramas and uh, now Just I've got in all kind of displays. All kinds of displays, so, that's right. So they need to come by uh -huh. and see that. And it's that's open right. uh, three days a week, is that right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, Thursday, Fridays, and Saturdays. Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. So if you want to uh, find out about the history of Smith County, um, give them a call or just drop by. That's right. Oh, and by the way, Bill, we have the flash drives of the history book. That's right. You've got them at the chamber, yes. and we have them at the museum. And those are 25 no, I'm sorry, $50, $50 a piece, but that's the complete book on a jump drive. Yeah, and what's beautiful about that is if you want to search your family name, mm -hmm. say for instance I wanted to search Woodard, I just type that in and it brings all the references in the uh, history book up that is uh, has the Woodard name involved in it and then you don't have to search through the book. That's Prior right. to getting the flash drive, <laughs> you had to go through the reference yeah. and go back and forth and it was a little bit difficult. So uh, it, it's really good to have this. I mm -hmm. have the history book and I have and the, the flash, drive flash drive for that very reason. That's so I can look things up. And we are selling them. People are calling and asking us to mail their mail them a copy of the flash drive. So, you know, and, and, and the beautiful part about that is is when we sell those out, we'll be we able get to more. get more of them. That's right. Unlike the history book, which is a rare That's item. That's a rare, rare item. Yeah. That's right. All, All right. right. Well, Pam, thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, Chris Hicks with UT Extension here with you. I want to talk about a couple of upcoming events we have concerning the Extension office. First of all, we're partnering with our local PBS station to host a viewing of Farmers for America, which is a documentary that's hosted by Mike Rowe, who you may recognize from the television show Dirty Jobs. Now, this screening of the film is going to be November 24th at 7 p.m., and so we'll hope you'll tune into that. But what we're really excited about is what's following the documentary at 8 p.m. on November 24th. We're going to have a live town hall that will be uh, viewed on PBS featuring area farmers. So we're going to have some of our local farmers in, in Smith County and other counties across the Upper Cumberland talking about uh, things that we learned in the movie as far as struggles for, that farmers are going through, but also things specific to agriculture in the Upper Cumberland. We're excited to have at least two of our local farmers. We have George McDonald from Katisa Farms and Rebecca Paschal with Cellar 53 Winery. They're both going to join us and talk about things that are uh, happening in agriculture and things that are affecting them and their operation. And again, that's November 24th at 7 p.m. for the screening of Farmers in America on PBS and followed at 8 o'clock with the live town hall. Uh, those of you who are viewing on DTC, I believe that's channel 22. So I I hope you make it a point to tune in and watch watch those things. I think it's going to be really uh, good information. The other thing I wanted to mention is our lunch and learn for December. We have uh, lunch and learn the first 
Wednesday of each month. And so for December, that's December the 2nd at the Smith County Chamber of Commerce. We're going to be talking about holiday plants. We have Lucas Holman from Wilson County Extension. Luke is a, a very accomplished horticulturalist and he's going to be talking about holiday plants. So things that you would uh, associate with uh, Christmas and this, this time of year. We're excited to have Lucas. Again, that'll be December 2nd at 12 p.m. at the Smith County Chamber. Now we are limited on space because we're going to try to keep everybody spread six feet apart and all of that. So we're limited to 15 people. So the first 15 people that come to the extension office, pay the $5 fee for lunch, are going to get to take part in this opportunity. So you want to be one of those 15 people that gets in because this is going to be really good. Lucas is an entertaining speaker. I think you'll really enjoy it. So come by our office at 125 Gordonsville Highway or give us a call at 615-735-2900. Hi everyone, this is Mary Draper with the University of Tennessee Extension in Smith County. Today I'd like to share with you some tips um, to have a health or a safer Thanksgiving and holiday meals um, because of COVID-19. So a lot of us are choosing to still have those family gatherings um, and the CDC recommends that we can have uh, as little people as possible. So our local guidelines suggest about 10 people or less. Um, so if that is possible, uh, also, that we suggest um, going outdoors if possible, if the weather permits. And if you're having it indoor, to either open a screen door or a window for better ventilation. And we don't want to have a fan uh, blowing directly at any person because that can spread the virus easier. When you're uh, serving the meal, it's best to have one person uh, touching the utensils, so actually serving it, one person serving each dish, so we don't retouch those utensils as well. When we're seated, uh, it's best to have multiple little tables. I know that when we have holiday meals, we usually have one long table, um, but if you have a couple of card tables that separate uh, the room a little bit more to get that six feet of distance as much as possible and encourage a place setting, so a name tag for each person so they encourage to sit in the same place. We always want to wash our hands before we eat um, and any time we touch different things such as the door um, or our utensils after we eat. We want to wash our hands for 20 seconds with warm water and if you have any other questions about health related topics you can always give us a call at the extension office at 615-735-2900. Hey everyone, Katie Martin here with Smith County 4-H. We are so excited to be back in the schools and meeting with the youth in Smith County. At our October club meetings, we explained how to give a successful 4-H speech. And now in our November club meetings, we are actually getting to hear those speeches from our 4-H members. Make sure your child is prepared and ready to give their speech on their 4-H club meeting day. Also know that our first and second place winners in the classroom will be invited to move on and compete at the county contest. Our county contest this year will be held on two days in order to maintain social distancing. We'll be meeting at Smith County Middle School on December 7th and 8th. December 7th will be for our 4th and 6th graders, while December 8th will be for our 5th and 7th through 12th graders. Make sure if your child was first or second in their class and received a letter to move on and compete at the county contest that you call an RSVP so we know how many to plan for. Last month, we were able to have our 4-H banquet. This banquet is a time where we celebrate the accomplishments of our 4-Hers from the past year. I just wanted to especially thank all the parents and volunteers who made this possible, along with Mayor Mason and Senator Mark Pody for being in attendance. I wanna give a special thank you to Smith County Farm Bureau who sponsored our meal, and a special shout out to Smith Farmers Co-op who was named our friend of 4-H for this year. We are looking forward to hosting not only in-person meetings, but also offering virtual options as well. So in December, join myself and Miss Mary for a holiday craft Zoom. Any 4-H'er 4th through 12th grade is welcome to sign up for this holiday craft Zoom session, which will be held in December. If you register by December 7th, you can not only join us for the Zoom, but we will put together a crafting kit that you can pick up at the office so you can do the craft right along with us as we meet. 
as always, we are offering many opportunities for our 4-H'ers in Smith County. If you have questions about these or any other opportunities that your 4-H'er can be involved in, please contact me at the Extension Office at 615-735-2900. Thank you. Well, it's amazing who you run into at the historic courthouse. Mary Leslie, so glad to have you with us. Uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell them uh, what you've got going on. Okay, my name is Mary Leslie Wakefield. I'm with the Smith County Drug Prevention Coalition. And one of the great things I get to do is work with students. So uh, the SAD students at the Smith County Middle School, and STAD, SAD stands for Students Against uh, Destructive Decisions. So these are students that are role models in their schools, and they're standing up and saying that we're not going to use drugs, tobacco, or alcohol. Peer-to-peer uh, -peer education is so important and so effective, uh, effective. So I am so proud of these girls for standing up and saying that. Uh, Red Ribbon Week is a national uh, campaign across our country and uh, these girls have entered the Red Ribbon Week photo contest and here's their photo right here and uh, I, I think it's an awesome photo they're all jumping up and one, one girl's actually doing a, a back bend and uh, we have entered that in the contest if they win their school smith county middle school will get a thousand dollars so we really want their school to win uh, one of the ways they can win is voting so there is a link on there and i think i wrote it on the other side okay. to make, make it easier for people to see yeah there there we go there's the link so if you would go to that link uh it will pull up the red ribbon uh, uh place and then you hit activities and then uh, you could go to photo and you'll see the photo and you just vote for us. You can vote once a day uh, till November 16th. That's when the contest end. So support our girls. Uh, I think they made a great statement and um, hopefully we might win. Well, that, that is wonderful. Uh, and I know we had a, a coalition meeting today and the coalition is going to start meeting on a different day. Uh, I'm starting next year, is that right? Mm -hmm. Starting in January, we're going to meet the second Thursday at 12 o'clock at the uh, Chamber of Commerce. And we usually we do it at 12 o'clock, so if you're working, uh, maybe you could run over there. Uh, it's, a, it's a working lunch, so we usually provide a light lunch. Uh, and we have our meeting. It's very educational. Uh, if you, our loved one, are struggling with uh, substance use disorder, uh, come to our meetings. There's people that can help you. You'll get education. You'll get support. Um, and we, that's, what, that's why we're here. We really want to help others. Yeah, and, and you can get naloxone training. Uh, they also can tell you about the drug take backs that they have going on. And yes. so there's a lot, of, a lot of good things going on with the Drug Coalition here in the county. And uh, of course, we at the Chamber uh, support that fully. Um, I can't think of anything that's going on in December or, or the end of November uh, right now, except uh, is there going to be a Drug Coalition meeting in December? Yes, we will meet in December, and that will be Wednesday at 12 o'clock, and it's always the second Wednesday at 12 o'clock. And we usually make that kind of a celebration, but anybody in the community, if you're interested in helping, uh, if, if drug abuse or addiction has affected you in any way, uh, you are welcome, and, and we would we would love for you to be at the table. We'd love to hear what you have to say. Okay, well, Mary Leslie, thank you very much. I'm glad you could come by, and uh, we'll have you again as things progress. Thank you, Bill. All right. We're still at the Smith County Courthouse, and if you're if you ever come by the square here, some of the most interesting people show up. <laughs> and these two ladies just were on the street, and we thought, well, hey, would they need to come in and be on TV? We dress festive just for this occasion, well, Bill. Well, yeah, hey, it's November. <laughs> That's it. That's it. <laughs> but I think Jordan. Christmas is coming. Christmas is a coming. Christmas is a coming. Christmas is coming to Middle Tennessee Traders Market, December 4th and 5th, at your Ag Center here. Okay. Well, and I'm looking forward to that. Tell you what, why don't you introduce yourself and, and your friend over here. Hi, and I'm Brandy, and this is my great friend Rosie. Rosie and I are the vendors and co-owners of Middle Tennessee Traders Market, which is a new vendor event that we hold here monthly yes. in Carthage at the Smith County Ag Center. Yes, and we, um, we are vendors, and so we kind of know what we would like to see as a vendor. And so we got together and we decided, you know what? 
why don't we provide a wonderful shopping experience, not right. only for customers coming in, but also the vendors there. How can we make this fun, interactive, and inclusive for everyone? That's right. So, what have we done, Brandy? Well, we started with creating Middle Tennessee Traders Market. Exactly. We took a little bit of a break from our June show that we had here um, with a virus that everybody knows about, with school starting back. Um, we had a show in July. We took a break um, just to let parents and families gather together around each other and um, to really feel safe and comfortable. We started back up in October. Um, in October, we had a wonderful event. We had so many people from Smith County and neighboring counties yes. come to our event, and we were so blessed to see that. So we actually offered a Halloween costume contest for kids. We did. We had balloon animals. We had face painting. Face painting. We had some local judges from Smith County and the city of Carthage come in to judge our kids for our costume contest, and everybody walked away with something. It was really so much fun. And what was really cool was that the vendors all brought candy or treats. So the children got to have an opportunity to actually go trick-or-treating right. in a safe environment. And oh, you should have seen the smiles on their faces. It, it was so, wonderful. It was awesome. It was so awesome to see the kids in the area be able to come and do something fun and safe during this pandemic. It was a lot of fun. Yes, it was. So for our November show, we actually... Oh, um, wow. That was also fun. Yeah. So our November show, we actually provided a treasure map to each of the vendor booths and we had each of our um, public that came in go to each booth you get a stamp at each booth when you turn in your map you're entered for a chance to win a holiday turkey or ham or wow. a gift card so we really enjoy giving back to the community and we enjoy getting to meet everybody all of the new vendors all of the new wonderful friends Absolutely. that we have made so we're so excited we hope that you guys will come to see us in December we offer um, a vendor event for artisans, crafters, traders, peddlers, direct sales companies, and many more. So we hope that you guys will come out, shop with us, meet each other, enjoy some family time with your neighbors and your friends in a good Christian market that is open on Friday from 10 to, 10 six. to 6 and Saturday from 8 to 4. 8 to 4. So we hope to see everybody there. Bill, will you be there with us this uh, time? I'm going to come by. I, I do have a question now. Yeah. You're doing this every month now? We are doing it every month. Do you do it at the, the same? Mm -hmm. uh, it's always at the Smith County Ag Center at okay. 159 Ag Center Lane. Right. And uh, during the month, do, do you choose different weekends or are you always on the same weekend during the it's month? It's a different weekend, but we are actually booked through November, through December 2021. All of 2021. All okay. of 2021. Yeah. All right. So. If somebody wants to be a uh, vendor and participate from that standpoint, how do they get in touch with you? Well, that's easy, Bill. You can look us up on Facebook at Middle Tennessee Traders Market. You can email us at direct sales dot carthage dot tennessee at gmail dot com and you can call me or rosie and you can also always come by our show to pick up a, to pick up an application okay all right well folks if you want to it looks like it's going to be fun are you sure you guys don't work for santa claus no, but you know what? We are actually very close to him. Oh, okay, you know him really well. We you, know you, him you, really well. We you know. know him so well that he's actually going to be making an appearance at our December holiday he's coming, market. Okay. He's yeah, right, coming to our show. So bring your kids, get a picture made, enjoy some fun times, enjoy some holiday shopping in some wonderful Smith County, Tennessee. We Absolutely. are so excited. Folks, you need to go by and visit with these ladies at the Smith County Ag Center. And if you forget uh, or, or it rolls by too fast, you call the chamber of Commerce, we'll be able to give you the directions and Absolutely. everything to it. Absolutely. Ladies, thank you for coming thank by. Thank you so much, thank Bill. Thank you for having us. Bye. <laughs> Boy, this courthouse is a happening place. It's just all kind of people coming by. And Miss Jan Trainum, introduce yourself. Tell them who you're with. 
I'm Jan Trainum, and I'm a pharmacist and part owner at Smith County Drug here in town. Okay, so you're not the pharmacist. You have other folks helping we as do. well. We do. There's, there's four of us, and we're all four partners, Jay Wilmore, Lisa Harville, Cosette Manis, and myself. Okay, all right. Well, that's good to bring your names. That's right. That's right. I want to give everybody credit. Well, now, you came by here for a reason to talk to us about something. What's going on? Well, we're going to talk about immunizations for just a minute. A lot of people don't realize that you can get flu shots, shingle shots, pneumonia shots, Tdap shots at your local pharmacy. A lot of people really? have always felt like they have to go to the doctor's office for that. But I'm in the one of those people. <laughs> well, you, you are. And, and for the last several years, probably about the last five or six years, independent pharmacies and even chain pharmacies have been given immunizations to give more access to the public. Mm -hmm. uh, the CDC wanted the general public to have a higher level of flu shot compliance. And so to do that, they certified pharmacists to be able to give flu shots. And so that's raised the percentage of the population that are protected from the flu. So it's it's November, but it's not too late to get your flu shot, so. Well, well the one thing, uh, uh, I'm one of those people that always went to the doctor. Mm -hmm. You know, you got to call, you have to make an appointment, you got to right. wait in the waiting room. Exactly. You know, you go in, and it's it's a big deal. Right. Uh, and time consuming. What about with you guys? What, what does you, it take? You walk in the door. You don't have to call ahead. You don't have to make an appointment. And typically, we have you in and out with about 10 minutes most of the time, 10 to 15 minutes. Depends if we have your insurance card or not. And flu shots are typically covered by most insurances. And Medicare completely covers it, and most commercial insurance plans do too. So if you're on Medicare, most everything you named is is already covered? Yes. That's wonderful. So. Okay, so so you're going to save time. Uh, you can come in about mm -hmm. any time and do it. What, what are your guys' hours? We're open from 8 to 6, Monday through Friday, and on Saturdays from 8 to 4, and we're closed on Sundays. Okay, now what uh, if, if they got questions, uh, what, how can they contact you? Phone number, uh, phone number phone website, we're, whatever. We're, we've got a website, smithcountydrug.com, and our phone number is 615-735-2223, and we're located just at the intersection there where the hospital and uh, McDonald's right there. You can't miss us. Yeah, yeah. well, that's true. Right on the corner there. Okay, uh, I don't know how deep, deep you can get into this, okay. but I do have some questions. Okay, you mentioned the flu shot. Now, right. I think everybody knows about that. Right. And they basically pick the strain that they think is coming through each year mm -hmm. and, and people get immunized for that. Right. But you mentioned a pneumonia shot? A pneumonia shot. Explain that. Well, there's two different pneumonia shots right now. Pneumonia... Um, is of course a bacterial infection, but it has a bunch of different strains. And so uh, it prevents, streptococcus pneumonia can cause several different kinds of pneumonia, not just pneumonia in the lungs, but sometimes it can even cause meningitis. And so that works against that. And um, there's two strains, there's, thir there's, the pe there's the Prevnar 13, and then there's the um, Pneumovax 23. So that covers basically 36 strains of pneumonia. Okay, what if you're one of these people that can't remember when you had a pneumonia shot? Well, typically, most people get one at 65 unless you're at higher risk of diabetes, asthma, or some type of uh, immunocompromised uh, disease state. So you, most everybody, the, the 23 was the first one that came out, and then they came out with the, the 13. And typically, Medicare will tell us when we run it through, if you're not eligible for another one, it won't pay for it. So that way, if, if you can't remember or we can't get a hold of your doctor, we can sort of go by it that way too. Okay, let's say you can't remember and there's no records and you have one of the shots, will it hurt you? No one hurts. Mm -mm. Okay, no. so so it, it's it's kind of a no-brainer. Right. If We're you've got go doubts, you probably mm -hmm. ought to do it. Right. We're just going to go by the guidelines. If you don't remember that you had one and the doctor says, I don't have a record of it, then we're going to start with the 13 and then you'll come back in 8 to 12 weeks or a few months, whenever you want to, and get the second one. Okay, now you mentioned the meningitis shot. Well, oh, not meningitis, uh... Yeah. Well, we talked about, we'll talk about shingles. Shingles. shingles, and there was an old, uh, not old, but older called Zostavax, and a lot of people got that, and if they remember, they would pick it up at the pharmacy and take it to the doctor's office, had to be given with 30 minutes of when we dispensed it because it was frozen, and that shot was about, they figured about 60% effective. They've come out with a new one called Shingrix and it's 92% effective. So the, the physicians are really pushing people to get that shingle shot, and it's a two-part shot. You get the first dose, and then two to six months later, you get the second dose. 
So, and it's it's covered by most insurances, and it even if you had the old one, if you had the Zostavax, they recommend you get the Shingrix because it's so much more effective. The old shot, most insurances wouldn't pay for it. You had to be 60, and this new one, your insurance will pay for it if you're 50. So they've, they've dropped the age that they recommend you get it because okay. of the lasting effects. A lot of people can have really terrible side effects. Okay, and there's shingrix. really no harm then if you've had the uh, older no. shot to take this one? No, they, they really, most physicians push you to do that. Okay, so. all right, now the last thing you mentioned was Tdap, I don't even know what that is. Well, Tdap is tetanus, diphtheria, and acellular pertussis. And most people um, associate that with, with their children going to school and boosters and things like that, or if you had a rusty nail, you would get a tetanus booster. But now they have, anybody that's pregnant, or anybody that's gonna be around a newborn baby, they recommend getting a Tdap shot because babies don't have any immunization against um, pertussis, which is a whooping cough. And we've seen a resurgence of whooping cough in this country. And so now um, most OBGYNs recommend anybody in close contact with a newborn have that Tdap shot and we give those to. Okay, and again, if you've had immunizations for, say had a tetanus shot a few years back, you can still do this right. and it's not going to harm right. you. Right, right. Okay. give you a good booster. All right. Well, that, that is good information for us to have. And, of course, let's do the phone number okay. again and, and let them know how they can get in touch. 615-735-2223. Uh, or at, we're at uh, smithcountydrug.com is our website. Okay. Well, that, that's very informative. And, of course, uh, they handle other prescriptions and things, yes. of, of course. Yes. About anything, uh, I know uh, one time there was uh, something that I was getting prescription from the doctor. It was, uh, uh, it's a, a cream. I shouldn't have brought this up. Now I can't remember <laughs> the name of it. But but anyway, uh, uh, I came to your uh, place of business and uh, they said, well, you know, uh, there's an overcounted version of this. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I really appreciated y'all doing that. And now I come in and, and I get this urea cream. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and, and it, uh, when you got cracked hands in, in dry the winter, skin. Uh -huh. dry skin, it, it's really good stuff. So uh, I, I don't have to do a prescription for that anymore. Right, and we, and we, I mean, we, that's part of the thing about being an independent local pharmacy. We really work at developing those relationships and, and coaching people on their health and if there's something over the counter that'll work, you know, taking the time to help you with that. And I don't know if you give points, but it was Samantha that did that. Samantha, point. she's a jewel. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's a We're good We're fortunate we have a very uh, good staff and a caring staff. Yeah, and I, I kind of, Samantha's kind of special anyway because of the is. plays and yes, stuff. Yes, yes, yes. Well, Jan, thank you for coming right. by. Uh, is there anything we missed? I don't think so, and thank you for giving us uh, the time. Well, now, there is one more question. Okay. Uh, drive through or can you come in, or, or, or are you not saying? No, our, no, our <laughs> lobby is open. We were sh we shut down in March when, every, when the COVID really uh, kicked up here in Smith County, and we were shut down just drive through only all summer, and then uh, Labor Day weekend, we opened back up. Okay. So, so you um, can come in and look around. You can come in, look around, mask are, it's fine if you want to wear a mask, mask aren't required but our drive through is still open if you're not comfortable or you know just for convenience okay well thank you very much all right all right guys go by and see smith county drugs all right thanks well folks i hope you enjoyed this edition of the chamber corner uh we got a lot of things the good things that are going on in smith county and i want to go over a few of them uh the first thing i want to hit is the santa shoppers uh our smith county sheriff's department uh, steve hopper and all of those folks up there uh beth davis uh, they um uh, put together a uh, program to where they take the foster kids and the kids that are in the foster system here in Smith County that are Smith County uh, kids and they're able to uh, take them to Walmart and get them a gift and uh, it takes donations to do that and they every year uh, have a lot of folks that uh, do donate for it and uh, they're supported by the businesses around here and it's a very good program I have been able to help with a, uh, with it a few times and it's really uh, 
fulfilling to uh, see those children and see how well they uh, uh, behave and, and how excited they are about being able to ride in a police uh, patrol car and, and, and get a gift down at Walmart. And so uh, if you want to support that, uh, you can call up the Sheriff's Department and, and uh, uh, make a donation there, but you can also call down to the Chamber of Commerce, 615-735-2093, and you can make a donation to the Santa's Shoppers. And uh, it is run through the Smith County Living uh, uh, Committee, and uh, it is a nonprofit, so it is a tax deductible uh, contribution that you make for uh, Santa Shoppers. So, if you want to support that, uh, you just give us a call, or you can call the Sheriff's Department and just tell them you want to make a donation to Santa Shoppers, and they'll take care of you down there. And uh, we really, uh, Sheriff Hopper, we really appreciate you doing this, and all you guys down there at the Sheriff's Department. It's a wonderful program. Uh, our Christmas parade, uh, we have two of them, uh, one in uh, Carthage and one in Gordonsville. And uh, what we're going to do is talk about the one in Carthage first. It's November the 29th. That's the weekend after Thanksgiving. And uh, the Christmas parade, it'll start on the far end of town. Uh, out here toward Highway 25, and it'll uh, come through all the way past the uh, historic courthouse. And uh, the uh, parade starts on the 29th, that's a Sunday, at 4.30. And so if you want to line up and see the parade, uh, just line up on the street, Main Street here in Carthage, sometime before 4.30, before the parade gets started. And they're going to, the uh, sheriff's, uh, or not the sheriff's office, the police department, Carthage's police department, will be blocking the street off and of course the parade will be coming uh, through on Main Street and that starts at about 4.30 and it should come by the courthouse about 5.30. Now, also simultaneously there's a separate event going on called Hometown Christmas that takes place on the Smith County, historic Smith County Courthouse grounds and a little bit of it inside, but most of it outside. And it's called Hometown Christmas. And there'll be people uh, singing and entertaining. There'll be some uh, uh, booths and uh, 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 folks around, uh, you know, with stuffs on display. And then also we'll have the county Christmas tree lighting. The county mayor will be here, and they'll, mount our, uh, they'll light our county Christmas tree along with the winner of the Harvest Queen pageant. And they'll be doing that. And then also uh, we're going to have Santa Claus. Uh, at the end of the parade, Santa Claus is going to come here to the courthouse, and we'll have a venue set up outside so that it'll be safe. And uh, if you want your child to meet Santa Claus, uh, he, she, he or she can do that on November the 29th at about 6 o'clock here at the historic Smith County Courthouse grounds. So uh, keep that in mind. Then the other parade is December the 5th, and it goes through Main Street in Gordonsville, and it starts at 5 p.m. So they'll be blocking the streets off, and they'll have, uh, you'll need to get there before 5 o'clock and get you a spot so that you can see the parade. And they usually have a big parade over there. Gordonsville, when they do something, they do it right, and uh, they, they're going to have a big parade this year, and uh, they, uh, they look forward to seeing you over there. And I believe that's everything I've got to talk to you about. I appreciate you watching the Chamber Corner, and we hope you have a great great November and a great December and we'll sh see you next time when we tape the next show. So folks, until I see you again, have a Merry Christmas, have a Happy Thanksgiving, and may God richly bless you.